What's up YouTube? Welcome back. Let's talk about compensators or porting in barrels. It seems to be so popular right now. A lot of guns are dropping. You guys just saw a new SIG drop. You guys have all kinds of guns with these porting little things on the front of the barrel or actual compensators attached. You'll notice this gun right here that I have, this 1911, it doesn't have any porting or compensator on here. And that's for a reason. I don't want that crap on my defensive handguns. Now I say crap when I'm talking about defensive handguns. If you're talking about certain shotguns and certain rifles, yes, those can be very effective. If you're talking about a competition pistol, that's a little different story. If you're talking about a fun target pistol or a really powerful pistol that you need some sort of a break or compensator on for hunting, I can understand that. But as far as defensive pistols, what all these compensated guns are coming out as, I don't think it's a good idea. And before you click off or get mad or give me a thumbs down, let me explain. I tend to be no BS on this channel. We just tend to tell the truth. And I have a little bit of experience. I'm not gonna go through my resume or anything like that. But I do know a few things about defensive shooting and what you might or might not want in a defensive firearm. So, hear me out. And sorry about the noise in the background. My neighbor, who's actually quite far away, just loves to mow his lawn at all the worst times. But anyway, if you have a defensive handgun, you're probably gonna be using it like this in a defensive situation. So. Somebody's gonna come up to you, they're gonna scare you, they're gonna do whatever, they're gonna have a knife, they're gonna have a gun, they're gonna say, give me your purse or wallet, whatever, and hopefully you get the chance to go, no, stop, get away from me, and it's all ended because you have a gun in your hand. But if you have to shoot, you're probably gonna do it like something like this. Hey, stop it, idiot. And you're gonna extend out and you're gonna take a shot. Extend out and take a shot. Now, that's nothing like doing a contact shot. So every now and then, that idiot is not really that far away they're this close to you. They're like right here in your face and they've got you. So when you're in a situation where you have an idiot like this on top of you, maybe ha already has hands on you and you're not ready for it, you're probably gonna have to deploy your firearm from a holster or wherever else you may be hiding it, but it's not gonna be a comfortable reach out type of thing where you get to get the gun far away from you. So let's think about this real quick. Porting lets a lot of things escape. One of those things is gas. Another of those things could be little tiny pieces of jacket or projectile, depending on what you're loading it with. Some of it could be unburnt gunpowder. Some of it could be straight up flame. So I'm gonna roll in a piece of video here of using a different firearm, but it's the idea of contact shots and how close you might have to shoot. And you're gonna see that might not be the best idea with porting. So when we're talking about contact shots, it's just what it seems like. It's a contact shot where you would have to be up close to something, let's just say that. This is not representative of a person or anything. This is just a random piece of cardboard I lined up. But let's say you were to have to get this close to somebody or something is on top of you and you are this close. Can you imagine a ported or a brake compensator type of a device? Let's go with compensator reported. But being that close to your face, I mean, this might actually happen. That's realistic. So I'm gonna shoot that target kind of contact shot style. I gotta keep my face down to protect my eyes no matter what, but I want to. I want you to see what's gonna be on this target when we're done with it. So it would look something like, one of the ways that you do the drill, I guess, I'll just have camera guy give me an up, but one of the ways you would do a drill like this to practice for it is, camera guy give me an up. Up. It's just that close. So you already see the stuff moving around like that. Basically, you get into the target and you give it a couple shots. So, again, camera guy, give me an up. Up. So, you're coming right up above it like this. When you fire, your contact shots are going to be somewhere like this. And you definitely might not have a perfect shot. You might actually be going upward like that and aiming that directly at you. Here's another way we can do this. Camera guy, give me an up. Up. So you see, even with the gun just laying like this, there is some stuff here that's coming up just because of the random spread of all those gases. Now imagine if there was porting like we just saw with the 500, you'd have a bigger problem. So that's enough to deal with. We don't want to deal with anything more than that. Now let's just cover the phrase contact shot for one second. I mean, you're contacting the person and that's what I'm meaning. A contact shot where you're directly holding the gun up against somebody, that's a little bit of a different story altogether, but we're talking contact distance. So let's just say a get the heck off of me shot because somebody's on you. All right, and I'm gonna show you a kind of extreme example next. I don't have a ported defensive pistol, like I said, but I do have a ported 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. So let me show you what that porting can actually do, what kind of damage it might do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover up this porting with a piece of cardboard. This is just a toilet paper tube that I've opened up and I've made sure there's no way it's gonna overhang the barrel. This is not any kind of a muffling device or anything. This is simply a test medium here to see what happens with these ports when they actually go off. 
We're gonna go with the Corbon 275 grain DPX load. And there you go. That's what happens with compensators that are on the top of a barrel. Anything that lets out the steam, lets out the gas, lets out the everything, look what that can do really quick. You guys saw it flying apart in the air as it shot, but it completely filleted that open. That's some stuff that you really do not want to see coming towards your face. That was kind of fun and that was cool, but that definitely showed you, you don't want to be in the way of any of those escaping gases or whatever else comes out of there. Another thing to take in consideration is your lighting situation. We're starting to get dusk here. I know you probably can't see it on the camera because the camera adjusts it out, but when the light starts to go down, you end up seeing more flash out of a gun. Camera guy's gonna come to the side and he's gonna kind of show you, hopefully if we can get it on camera, what the flash looks like just out of a regular 45 ACP loaded up with some tight group. So I'm sure you can see that and I'll shoot again just to make sure. Now camera guy's gonna come above the top of the gun with the camera. And now you're going to see that the fire doesn't go too high above the firearm. Well, the camera's attempting to make a total liar out of me. I can assure you, though, in real life, it doesn't look that terrible. At least it looks really cool in that still frame. It's within this circle. I can't really put my hand in front of the firearm, but it's in this circle around the gun. I'm going to do it one more time. So, so I can promise you, if you have a big old open cut in the front of your barrel, or if you have a bunch of little holes on each side, I can promise you that that flame is gonna go upward. So in the dark, you're gonna be looking down the barrel and you're gonna need to acquire your front sight, or you're gonna be looking through a red dot looking for your red dot. Well, when you light that gun off and that fire goes up in front of you and you already have night vision started because it's dark and your pupils do what pupils do, you're gonna be adjusted for the dark. You're gonna see that bright flash. You are gonna be temporary blinded. I've done it, I've practiced it. I've done it with all kinds of guns. Promise you, I've taken night shooting classes or whatever you wanna call it, low light classes. It's not cool to get a big muzzle flash. So when they talk about defensive ammunition with flash retardant powders, flash suppressive powders, that's actually something to consider. But in the meantime, we might not wanna put a port on the top of our gun. All right, another thing to consider is the possible loss of velocity due to barrel length. Now, everybody's a barrel length freak anymore. When they're talking about things like 10 millimeter, which there are these 10 millimeter compensated guns out there, people will talk about, oh, a five inch barrel, a six inch barrel, you need this and that. I don't buy into a whole lot of that. Bullets do good things out of short barrels. But if you're gonna worry about velocity, well, as soon as you drill holes in the top of your barrel, I'm not a total expert in this area, but I believe you're gonna bleed off some velocity. You're losing gas that bullet hasn't exited the barrel yet and you start to bleed off right ahead of time. How much, I don't know. But here's the thing, we've seen some really crazy porting recently. I'm gonna roll in two pictures here of some guns that I think it's absolutely insane that someone would port these. First of all, you got this revolver here, or over here, wherever I put it, and why would you do that? It's already short enough, it's gonna shoot a bunch of flame, and it's got porting all the way across the barrel. You've essentially bleeding off, you are bleeding off velocity the whole way through. Now this next one that I'm gonna show you here, this thing makes no sense because it's a 22 Magnum, which is not very powerful as far as recoil, and it's already got a one inch barrel and they've ported it. So now we have what, a half of an inch barrel? I just don't understand that. So it's a possible consideration, but I'm not a ballistics guy that you know really knows this stuff down to the sciences. I just think intuition tells me it's probably a bad idea. Now I'm not gonna say porting is bad for all defensive firearms. If you're gonna carry something like a 460 Roland, you probably need that porting. But remember, you're gonna be limited to that gun's application. For all the rest of us, when it comes to porting, there is one more thing that I can think of that I really would not consider a good thing about porting, and that's the cost. It always increased the cost of the firearm. As soon as they have to do extra steps to drill the holes in the barrel, and most of the time slides also, unless it's just a revolver, it's a little different in a revolver, but still. Or any time that they have to add a compensator onto the front of the gun, you know, they have to engineer that, they have to build that, they have to program that into their CNC, they have to do research and development and testing, it adds to the cost of the gun. And what are the benefits from it? Does it really hold down recoil? If you're shooting a 22, like the little, little revolver that we showed you, no, that's not gonna matter. And I don't think it really helps you too much with a nine millimeter or a 380. To tell you the truth, I don't think it helps you a whole lot with a 10 millimeter. If you can shoot a 10 millimeter, you can shoot a 10 millimeter. I don't think there's anybody out there that's gonna go, you know what, I just can't shoot that unless it's ported or unless it's compensated. You can either shoot it or you can't shoot it. Might it help you? Sure, but again, you're weighing the pros and cons. What was that you said, camera guy? Compensators add weight to the gun. 
he's right. I didn't even think about that. Added weight to the gun. Now, sometimes people may think that that's good because it'll hold the barrel down, helping with recoil even more. But again, you could just be adding unnecessary weight to the gun and length to the gun. Good point, camera guy. All right, now, since I beat up on the compensators just a little bit, I'll give you my pros. My pros are going to be, they look cool as heck. I'll give them that. It usually makes your gun look nice. And it can go ahead and hold the muzzle down. For certain applications, that might be something you want but not all the time. I think it's more applicable to rifles and shotguns and things that go really fast velocity. Just not sure it helps with your 380s, your 9mm, your 10mm, definitely not your 45s or anything like that. Just my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm totally wrong or if you think I have some good points. I, of course, think I'm 100% right because it's the turkey's opinion and the turkeys are always right. And I know someone in there is going to put something in the comments that I haven't even thought of pro or con-wise, and that's awesome. You guys have good comments. I really enjoy learning things from all of you. You're all pretty smart. We learn things from each other. It's a good little community we have here on The Turkey's Opinion. Speaking of that, you might want to stop by our live chats on Mondays and Wednesday nights, usually at least. Sometimes we do other days of the week. They're usually at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, but we throw them in there all over the place. Sometimes they're random topics, sometimes they're normal topics. But they're fun, everybody has a good time. Stop by and at least say hi. All right, that's enough blah, blah, blah for me. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you at the next one. And until then, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.